Okay, so since we saw some, uh, we're still working on optics, let's work on another area of optics. All right, so let's say that this is our surface. Uh, what is a surface? A surface is a barrier, uh, a surface is the border between two different mediums. So this would be medium one, and this would be medium two. What's a medium? Well, a medium is just stuff. The medium is just the stuff that the light is traveling through. So the medium, or the absence of stuff in a vacuum, the medium might be a vacuum, or air, or water, or glass. We know that light can travel through many different substances. This is light. Um, is this the incoming or the outgoing light? Mm -hmm. You can see that for, from the air. It's always helpful to label the incoming light. If this line is the surface, then what do we call this line? There's a special name for this line here. And this is the normal. Is that a term okay. you've heard used? All right. Why is it normal? What's the angle between the normal and the surface? Yeah, we know normal means perpendicular. OK, we know that for optics, it's often very useful to draw the normal. OK, so here's the normal. By the way, draw the normal to this surface. It might be a good idea to draw it as a dashed line, because it's just a reference line. There isn't actually anything here. Not only is there no material, special material here, there's not even any light. It's just a reference line. So maybe it's good to draw that as a dashed line. Um, also, um, let's uh, draw a horizontal here. Just anywhere you want. Go ahead and draw a horizontal. Anywhere you want, that's fine. Anywhere that might be helpful. Maybe that seems like a weird question. But let's say uh, we could draw, say, this line, and we could call this a horizontal. It's pretty obvious why this is horizontal, right? Yeah. OK. Uh, and now let's also draw a uh, vertical. So I'll draw this vertical here. Why did I draw the vertical here and not here? Well, just because I felt like it. Obviously, there's many verticals you can draw, and there's many horizontals you could draw. OK, the point I wanted to make is that in this picture, the surface was horizontal. Mm -hmm. And in most of the pictures you do, the surface is usually drawn horizontal, but we shouldn't let that fool us. Surfaces don't have to be horizontal. The surface and the horizontal could be two different things. Um, on a simple question, the surface is the horizontal, but if they want to mess us up, they might make the surface at a slant. So we have to distinguish between the surface and the, surface and the horizontal. Also, in simple problems, since the surface is usually horizontal, the normal is usually vertical. But again, on a hard test question, they can throw in a case where the surface is at a slant, and then the normal is at a slant, and then the normal and the vertical are two different things. Okay, there's a question like this uh, in your homework with like a crystal with a bunch of different planes. And the most important thing to do in that picture is label all the lines, just like I've done in this picture here. Because otherwise, we're going to keep forgetting what all these lines represent. If we don't label all the lines, we're going to keep forgetting what all these lines represent. Especially because, uh, yeah, so um, it, when there's uh, this is an important uh, method for solving these kinds of reflection and refraction, refraction problems. Reflection and refraction tend to have a whole bunch of lines. Well, it's very easy to, remember, uh, to figure out what each line stands for, but it's hard to remember what they stand for. So you need, to keep label, you need to label them so you don't have to figure out over and over, just like I've done in this picture here. Um, so the, the homework problem I'm talking about, the problem specifically talks sometimes about the surface, sometimes about the normal, and sometimes about the vertical. So then you have to have labeled which is which, so we don't get confused when we're working through those. OK, so labeling is important here. Uh, going back to here, here's our incoming light. I'll go ahead and draw the reflected light. Uh, you tell me, so what does reflected mean? Is the reflected light going to come back the same way it came in? Or is it going to go through the surface? It's going to come back out the same way. Yeah, here we can just use the ordinary English meaning of reflected, right? When something is reflected off something, does it pass through it or does it bounce off? Bounce off. Yeah, so we want to draw the ray bouncing off. 
Uh, let's see, that doesn't quite look right. So here's the surface that we're bouncing off of. Oh, so I that ray was still, off. yeah. There you go. So you can think of this surface like a mirror. Yeah. Okay. Although it doesn't have to be a mirror, it could just be a pane of glass because we know the glass is reflective too. Or it could be the water. We know the light bounces off the water. Well, light that reflects off the water is not the light that goes into the water. Maybe it would have been clearer if I had actually given these some names. Medium one could be air, and medium two could be the water. Well, the light that reflects off the water doesn't go into the water. It's the light that goes, uh, comes back out into the air. What would be a good name for this line? Yeah, outgoing light. Maybe I don't need to label it because I got the arrow, but maybe I should label it anyway. So it's always good to put these arrows in so we don't confuse the incoming and the outgoing light. All right, so uh, while we're at it, oh, now this angle here is often called theta. Well, if this is called theta, what would be, what would be a good name for this angle? What's the relationship between this angle and this angle? That's the law of reflection. We haven't talked about reflection or refraction, but it looks like you've already mastered the law of reflection. The law of reflection is that the angle coming in is the same as the angle going out. Uh, another name for this would be the angle of incidence. That's a word that actually is used a lot. So the angle of incidence, well, notice that starts with IM for incoming. Incidence is the angle of the incoming light. Whereas theta here, uh, well, then here we have the outgoing light, and they both have the same angle. Now notice, is theta measured with the, uh, is this angle here measured with the normal or with the surface? With the normal. Just from, you can see from the picture, that it's an angle with the normal. It's the angle between the light and the normal. That's just a convention. The convention is that when we use the symbol theta, that's for the angle with the normal. What, do you, what would you say is the relationship between these two angles with the surface? Um, yeah, they have to be equal to because this uh, angle plus theta has to add up to 90. So if we wanted to, we could have called these both alpha, and we could have said the alphas were equal. Um, usually in optics, it's more standard to work with the angle with the normal. But sometimes it's actually convenient to work with the surface because then you don't have to draw the normal, right? Um, sometimes the normal just messes us up by giving us a new line. So as far as reflection is concerned, you could say that the angles with the surface are equal or that the angles with the normal are equal. But when people use the simple theta, they usually mean the angle with the normal. So maybe you could use alpha for the angle of the surface. What does this line represent? Try drawing the outgoing light. Good. Which are the angles that are equal? Okay, good. So again, you're focusing here on theta, the angle with the normal. This is just a little more confusing because the normal is not vertical the way it normally is. Here the normal's at a slant, so we can draw the outgoing light like this, and then this angle here would be theta. The one thing we don't want to do is draw an angle with the vertical here, because the vertical has nothing to do with the problem anymore. Um, I actually made this easy by drawing the vertical all the way over here. I think in the homework, they drew the vertical right through this point. And then you can see how confusing things get, because you don't know which line to focus on. Well, the only uh, refuge there is to have everything labeled, so we know who we're focusing on. So is it convention that when like, the light ray comes, hits the surface, that it's like, in relation to the normal? Like, is it ever, yeah. I mean, so like, you wouldn't ever look at the incoming light coming in onto the surface and how it bounces back. They certainly couldn't ask you that question. No, absolutely. In fact, that, in that homework problem, they do ask you questions like, what's the angle with so the horizontal? Can what's that? Well, so, so, they can, so you can measure any angle you feel like. You can measure any angle you feel like. However, which two angles are always equal based on the science? The angles that are equal are the two angles with the normal or the two angles with the surface. Um, so the way to solve a problem like this, even if they're asking you for the angle with the horizontal or the angle with the vertical, the first thing would be to find the angles with the normal, because those are the ones we know from the science. And we know the angles with the surface. And then we would use geometry okay. to figure out the other angles. That's what you have to do in that homework problem. You have to use the science to say that these two angles are equal. 
and then you have to just, and then at that point, it's not science, it's not physics anymore, it's a geometry problem. Then you have to do geometry to figure out if, if I know this angle, what's the angles over here with the horizontal and the vertical, basically. So a couple of keys here, use pencil, because you're sure to be erasing, and use a whole piece of paper for your picture. You want to draw the biggest picture you can. This is already getting messy over here, so you want to draw a great big picture so you can clearly label everything. And now you can see why I said we had to label all the lines, because now we have two new lines, now we have the light lines. So you could get even more confused by these light lines. Maybe it might help to draw the light as a, uh, a solid line, and most of the reference lines as dash, so we don't get them confused. But we still need labels, so we don't get confused about everything. Um, OK. OK, so that's our uh, labeling technique. <laughs>